why do people use numbers when they talk about music? What the heck is a V chord? Why can't you just put five there? Great question. Let's talk about it. In this video, we're going to talk about three types of numbers in music. Scale degrees, chord degrees, and intervals. What these things all have in common is that they describe relationships. Basically, intervals describe the relationship between two notes, not three notes, and not four notes. Two notes. Any two notes. In Western music theory, the name of the interval has two parts, the number and the type. Let's talk about the numbers first. The smallest of intervals in Western music is called the semitone. But Devin, there are technically smaller intervals than that, like microtones and com. No one cares. We're talking about the semitone. So let's talk about the semitone. The semitone is a half step interval. So the distance between C and C sharp is a semitone. There are two types of intervals that aren't described with names that have numbers in them. One of them is called a unison. You would think that this is called a first but it's not it's called a unison this describes the distance between two identical notes so the distance between this C and this C is called a unison. Now this is different from an octave, the second interval I'm talking about. The octave also describes the distance between a C and a C, but the second C note is higher or lower than the first C note by 12 white and black keys. So the distance between this C note and this C note is called an octave. Now let's fill in the rest of the C major scale. The distance between C and D is a second, C and E is a third, C and F is a fourth, C and G is a fifth, C and A is a sixth, and C and B is a seventh. Now let's talk about the types. So in any major scale, the unison, fourth, fifth, and octave are considered perfect intervals. For example, the distance between C and G in the C major scale is a perfect fifth. The rest of the intervals in a major scale, the second, third, sixth, and seventh are all major intervals. So for example, in a C major scale, the distance between a C note and a D note is a major second. But Devin, what about minor scales? Great question. Let's look at the C minor scale. scale, the unison, fourth, fifth, and octave intervals are still perfect, but the third, sixth, and seventh intervals are now minor. This is because a minor interval is one half step smaller than a major interval. What's the second interval you may be wondering? It's actually still a major second. This is because the number of half steps between the first and the second notes in the key did not change. So the unison, fourth, fifth, and octave intervals in both major and minor scales are perfect. The second interval in major and minor scales are both major seconds. The only difference between the types of intervals in major and minor scales is that the third, sixth, and seventh intervals are major when talking about major scales and minor when talking about minor scales. Pop quiz! In a C minor scale, what do you call the distance between a C note and an F note? Did you say perfect fourth? Because if you did, you're right. These relate notes to keys. So let's take the C major scale for example. Say you have a song that's in the key of C major, like Stay With Me by Sam Smith. So if Stay With Me is in the key of C major, that means that the song is made up of notes in the C major scale. The C major scale has the notes C, D, E, F, G, a, B, C. So a scale degree is the position of the note relative to the first note of the scale, aka the root note, aka the tonic. So C is one, D is two, E is three, and so on if we're talking about the C major scale, which we are. A note's scale degree gives you an idea of how a note works in a piece of music that's written in the scale's key. The most important number 
numbers to understand are scale degree one, scale degree five, and scale degree seven. The one, or tonic, is the tonal center of the key. So music is all about building and releasing tension, and the one is where all that tension is released. It sort of acts like the home base of the key. So, so notice in how the chorus of Stay With Me by Sam Smith, the melody begins and ends on the one. The five, or the dominant, is another important scale degree because because it has very little tension when played with the one or the tonic. The seven or the leading tone, on the other hand, creates a lot of tension. The seven is called the leading tone because it wants to move up a half step to the tonic so badly. Since an octave is one of the least tense intervals in music. Pop quiz, what's the five or dominant note in the key of C? Did you say G? If you did, you're right. Using numbers and scale degrees helps us relate notes to keys. It helps us take what we just did with the key of C major and apply it to other keys. The one is always the tonal home base, the five always has little tension with the one, and the seven always has a lot of tension with the one. Scale degrees also come in handy when building chords. So in terms of using numbers to describe chords, this is something we call the Nashville number system. This relates chords to keys. Let's take the key of C for example again. The one chord of any key is the same as the name of the key. So the one chord of the C major scale is C major, the one chord of the G major scale is G major, you get the idea. Then you basically just go up the alphabet to find the rest of the chords. So for C major, one is C. 2 is D minor, 3 is E minor, 4 is F, 5 is G, 6 is A minor, and 7 is B diminished. But Devin, why are the 2, 3, and 6 chords minor? Why is the 7th chord diminished? What does diminished even mean? I'm glad you asked. So all of these chords are called triads because they're made up of three notes. Major chords are made up of the one, the three, and the five notes of the scale. This is where our scale degrees come in handy. The one is the root of the chord, the third is what gives the chord its character, and the fifth provides a stable harmony to the one, or an unstable one. Let's try to make a C chord. The one would be a C, the three would be an E, and the five would be a G. Now, Let's take the 1, 3, 5 chord formula and move it all up one note in the scale. The 1 would be a D, the 3 would be an F, and the 5 would be an A. We just made a D minor chord! Why is it minor, you ask? That's because the distance between the D and the F, aka the 1 and the 3, is a minor third interval. This means that D to F has one less white and black key than C to E which is a major third interval. C to E is four keys, and D to F is three. If we move our one, three, five up one more note to E, we get E minor. That's because the distance between E and G is a minor third interval again. Using this technique will give us F and G major and A minor. Let's use the same 1-3-5 formula on the last note of the scale, B. This will give us B, D, and F. Notice how it sounds different from the rest of the chords? That's because there are only six keys in between B and F. Every other chord has seven keys in between its 1 and 5, except for this one. Instead of calling this interval a minor fifth, we call it a diminished fifth. So, that's why this is called a B diminished. So basically, the reason that the chords are the way they are in the Nashville number system is because when you go up the scale with the one, three, five chord formula, those are the chords it gives you. Now that that's cleared up, let's get back to talking about chord degrees. These are great when analyzing chord progressions. For example, a really common chord progression in Western music is the good old one, five, six, four. Usually you'll see these written as 
Big I, Big V, Little V I, Big I V. Uppercase Roman numerals are used to describe major chords and lowercase Roman numerals are used to describe minor chords. Sometimes you'll also see a plus sign or a minus sign. Plus sign describes major chords, minus sign describes minor chords. Even though Roman numerals are dumb and they're for old people and they stink, not everyone feels that way, so we have to use them. In the key of C major, what chords will make up a 1-5-6-4 chord progression? Let's walk through it together. The one chord would be C, since we're in the key of C major. The five chord would be five letters above the C, so C, D, E, F, G. G is the five chord. The six chord is one of the minors since the two, three, and six chords in this number system are minor chords. So our six chord would be one letter above the G, which is A. Make it a minor chord and we have our six chord, A minor. Last but not least, let's figure out our four chord. Four letters above C is F. F is our four chord. So a one, five, six, four chord progression in the key of C major goes like this. Here's a few songs that use this exact chord progression in this key. to describe chords describes the relationship of the chord to the key it's in. Neil Matthews Jr., the inventor of the Nashville number system, said the purpose of the system is, quote, to provide shorthand that we needed so that we could depend on our ears rather than a written arrangement. It took far less time to jot the chords, and once you had the chart written, it applied to any key. So, to sum things up, scale degrees use numbers to relate notes to keys, chord degrees use numbers to relate chords to keys, and intervals use numbers to relate notes to each other. Thanks for watching. Now, go make a song.